Father God in heaven, it's in the name of Jesus the Christ we come. We thank you again, Father God, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, for keeping us, for blessing us, for allowing us to come this far. And we realize, Father God, it's because of God's amazing grace. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for your mercy. For we did not receive what we deserve that was bad. Thank you for your grace, Father God, that you give us grace when we don't deserve it, Father God. You give us love, you give us compassion when we don't deserve it. And we thank you for it today. Now, Father God, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for falling short. Forgive us for not doing the things that are pleasing in your sight. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we come before you today. Bless your word, Father God, that your word will fall on good soil. Bless us, Father God, that we will walk with you and that we will do the things that you're calling for us to do. Bless us, Father God, that we will not be disobedient and we will not omit those things that are pleasing to you. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless your word to go forth that men, women, boys, and girls will be changed that our lives will be made to different. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Jesus the one who died for us and rose from the dead. It's in the name of Jesus we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Yes, it's God's amazing, God's amazing grace that has blessed us one more time. He has blessed us to come this far. And for that, I'm thankful. I am thankful for God's Amazing, amazing grace. Amen. Let me call your attention to the book of Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. The book is Genesis in the Old Testament. If you can't find it, we'll catch you after church is over. Genesis chapter 3. We'll, we'll call a meeting. And get with you after church is over. Get with you after church is over and help you find the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis in the Old Testament. The book of Genesis in the Old Testament. Chapter 3, we'll be looking at three verses. Verses 6, 7, and 21. 6, 7, and 21. Genesis chapter 3, verses 6, 7, and 21. Brother Richard, would you hit that line over there for me? Genesis chapter 3, verses 6, 7, and 21. Just halfway. 6, 7, and 21. Come on up a little bit. Genesis chapter 3, verses 6, 7, and 21. 6, 7, and 20. Come on up a little bit, please, sir. Verses 6, 7, and 21. Genesis chapter 3. When you found it, you will discover these words. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings verse 21 also for adam and his wife the lord god made tunics of skin and clothe them. I want to talk about God's covering grace. All right. God's covering grace. All right. Well, last week we said to you that many times we mask up for covering because there's danger on the scene. I said to you that folk have different ways of masking up. Some people have come to the conclusion that there's no use of having a covering. They've concluded like the former president that this thing called masking is really a disaster. 
He says that it's no use, even though medical profession says that we ought to keep masking up. Then I said to you on last week, not only do there are some people who refuse to put on a mask or some type of facial covering, there are those who believe, believe in the 50% mask. It's 50%. They, they come to the conclusion that they can wear it halfway around their mouth, but not around their nose. Yeah, yeah. It's called a 50% mask. Then I said to you, there's what is known as the next mask. The mask that was made for their faces, Brother Carter, they hang it around their neck and as if that is a good covering. Then there's what is known as the hanging mask. And they, <laughs> They, they hang it around one ear and it looks cool just to have it and it becomes another, another status symbol, Brother Davis. It's called the hanging mask. Then there are those who have their mask on, but when they want to talk to you, they pull it down. It's called the talking mask. And, and they, they, they got it on just for show. They got it on just so that people can see them with it on. But when they want to talk to you, they lower their mask. And it's called a talking mask. But I discovered another kind of mask this morning, those who have it on. And then they pull it down so they can hear. Now, what it got to do with hearing, I don't know. I can halfway decently understand when they pull it down to talk, but they're defeating the purpose of the mask. And now they have the hearing mask. They pull it down so they can hear you real good. Then you have what is known as the pull down mask. When they get around a certain group of people, they pull it down so they won't be uh, out of fashion around those people. And then you have what is known as the flip flop mask. They have it on on one side. Then they take it off and put the contaminated part on the opposite side. And finally, I said to you, there's what is known as the designer mask. Even the New Beginning Church have their own little design on their mask. We have a big one and a little one. We, we have the designer mask where everybody knows who we are. And I said all those things last week to let you know that sometimes people treat God the way they treat their mask. They flip-flop in between godliness. They hang on to God just like they just need him every now and then. They talk, and when they talk, they say, God, you stay here. I'm going to go give her a piece of my mind. It's called a talking mask. Then they have the pull-down mask where they treat God like, God, I'm going to pull you off to the side right now. I don't have use for you right now. I'm going to do my thing. I'll come back, God, and pick you up later. And then the neck mask, they, they're saying to God, God, that I'm going to protect something that I don't really need protecting in this incident. So I'm going to protect my car, my house, my money, my 401k. And God, I don't need you to protect that. And today I want to talk to you about another type of covering. In Genesis chapters 1, 2, and 3, we find the first human beings on record. We find Adam and Eve. Adam didn't have a Cadillac, but he didn't need one. He didn't have a luxury suite, but he didn't need one. Adam had God walking through, talking to him every day. Adam had direct connection with God. He had con direct connection. Wouldn't it be nice today if we could just turn our head and say, God, thank you? If we could just look up in the sky and say, Lord, I praise you. I just want to serve notice on you today. You can. <laughs> you have direct connection with God because Jesus made it plain and made it available to you over 2,000 years ago on a skull hill called Calvary. All right. Yeah, we have direct connection. We no longer have to go through the Holy of Holies to get to God. We can go boldly before him for ourselves through Jesus Christ. It's good news today to know that we can, the veil of the temple has been ripped from top to bottom. There's no veil in between us. It's good news that we can go right.
fight the dog for ourselves. We can go to God for ourselves. We can go to God just like Adam and Eve. We can do our thing before God. We can talk to God. We can speak to him. And God can speak to us. So Adam had this privilege of talking and being a part of God. He, he had this honor of being right there with God. He, he, God had already spoke things into existence. But when it got to mankind, he scooped down into the dust of the earth. And he fashioned and he shaped man. And after he fashioned and he shaped man, he blew into his nostrils and made him a living soul. <laughs> You're somebody. You are special. Let me just share with you today, and let me just stop right here and let you know, if you're worrying about low self-esteem, I want to stop by and tell you that God thinks much of you, so much of you, that he made you special. There's no one like you, even if you are a twin or a triplet. There's no one like you. God has set aside you and made you special. Regardless of how small your fingers and hands are, regardless of how big your lips and your buttocks are, regardless of how your arms and your heads are shaped, God has created you special. The psalmist in Psalm 139 picks this thought up and he says that great is the hand and works of God. He has created me a little lower than the angels. He has blessed me. Oh, great and wonderful is the name of God for he is excellent. He has created me in a way that he has created me. Thank God he's done what he has done with you. Folk who are in church, folk who love the Lord, folk who are saved has no problem, should not have any problem with being low in their esteem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You serve the awesome God. You are walking with him. He's speaking to you. If you listen to him, he's talking to you. So God spoke to Adam and Eve. And, and the thing about Eve, he made her so special, he was just showing out. It doesn't matter, women, how you built. God has created you different from man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when God created a woman, let me tell you something. He did himself something. That may not be good English, but he did something. That's why I don't understand why a man would leave a woman for a man. Because God has put something before him. God has put a woman before him. And let me tell you, Sister Carter, when he created a woman, he did something. He took, he, took, he took one rib. He took one rib from the man and created a whole woman. Look at God. He was showing out, I tell you. He created, he created a woman from a rib. He created a woman from a rib. He took a, skin, a skinny piece of bone with a little bit of meat on it and created a whole woman. And he did what he did it in an awesome way. Yes, Brothers, I'm telling you if, you, if you have a woman in your house, you have a woman on your arm, or you were born by a woman in which I know you were, they deserve respect because God did something. Yes, sir. You, you, can't, you can't afford to raise your voice at her. Because he created her as the weaker vessel. You can't afford to push her. And you can't afford to slap her. You can't afford to talk under her clothes and talk about how bad she is. Because when God created a woman, he did something. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. And so for us, brothers, our responsibility is to tell them how great they are through the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Instead of looking at the body as a, as, as a sex object, you need to look at the female body as a wonderful specimen of God. Look at the specimen that God has allowed me to be around. God did something. He created a woman. And so women all over this world suffer from this esteem problem. And I don't understand it. Maybe somebody can tell me after the service is over. But I just know that God did something great when he created a woman. Because you are concerned about your shape and other folk are getting Botox to look like you look. 
Y'all ain't in the house this morning. You need to understand that other folk are shooting stuff in their lips so they can have big lips like you. And God did something when he created a woman. And so God created Adam and Eve. He created Adam from the dust, not even good dirt from the dust of the earth. And God spent his time with them. And let me tell you, when you love something, you spend your time with it. Sister, let me just serve you notice. If he, if he didn't ever have time, you ought not have time when he got time. Because when you love something, you spend time with that something. When you love somebody, you spend time with that somebody. Time, quality time makes a difference. So God spent quality time with Adam and Eve. He said to them, there's a tree that sits in the middle of the garden. I'm not going to move my tree. The tree belongs to me. <laughs> I'm not going to put a fence around my tree. That's my tree. But what I want you to realize, the day that you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. That's right. The serpent comes along in chapter 3, begins to talk to Miss Eve about this tree. Let me just tell you, whenever there's God, Wherever God is present, the devil always makes himself present also. The Bible says when the saints of God got together in church service, the devil showed up also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he catch a ride with you this morning? Did he come in the door with you this morning? The Bible says that when the saints of God showed up at worship service, the devil showed up with them. You see, the devil is a hitchhiker. The devil is a parasite. The devil tries to get your mind focused on stuff that it should not be focused on. The devil looks to kill, steal, and destroy. When we look at the text in chapter 3, we find the devil is more subtle than any other animal. The serpent is more subtle than any other animal. The serpent is more cunning than any other animal that God has created. So here it is. The, the serpent approaches Eve and said, God didn't really say you would die, did he? She said, oh yeah, oh yeah, God said that we would die if we eat of this fruit. And then he changed his tone. The devil will always change his tone. He says, you won't surely die, but he knows that you will be as a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he knows that if you eat of this fruit, you will be as a dog. Let me just tell you, we always want forbidden fruit. We always want fruit that we ought not have. We always want something that we should not be doing. We always go places we should not go. It's because it's forbidden fruit. So man gets tempted in the God and he falls. Verse number six says, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, you see, there are three things. There are three things that the devil will always tempt you by and tempt you through. Number one is the lust of the flesh. Look at what it is, the food. The food, the food, the food, the food. Right in the middle of my fast, somebody gives me chocolate. A chocolate cake. I mean, chocolate on the outside. Chocolate on the inside. Chocolate on the bottom. Chocolate around the side. And then to top it off, they make it German chocolate. Uh -oh. Lust of the flesh. Because John says that the lust of the flesh is the way the devil, tr devil tick tricks you. So he does it with Eve. He didn't just start tripping with man. He didn't just start tricking man. Lust of the flesh. He tricked when Eve saw that it was good for food. It got her attention. What food? And I'm not just talking about food. What food is tripping you up? Lust of the flesh. What in your flesh is getting your attention? So much so until you just can't deal with it. You just got to give in. Then look what it says. It says that it was pleasant to the eyes. Another thing that John says that the other temptation that will come upon us will be lust of the eye. 
what we see. How she shashayed by me. What we see. Ooh, he showed us have both legs. What we see. Ooh, they skipping school. I think I'll see if I can do that too. What we see. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the final one is the pride of life. Look at what it says right here in the text. It says, and then she saw that it was this tree desirable to make one wise. The pride of life. Bragging rights. Do you want bragging rights? Do you want something by which you can tell people that I'm the one that did it? I'm the only one that was successful. The pride of life. I got this going on for myself. I drive what I want to drive. I live where I want to live. I got a gated community. Let me just stop right here and tell you that gated communities are a joke. Many times, I don't know what neighborhood you're in, but many times the gate is more broken than it is fixed. And then if it's not broken, the first car drives through, the second car drives through, and then when it gets ready to close, it has the bag off in fear of a lawsuit. Then the third, fifth, fifth, sixth, eight, tenth car drives through. Gated communities are overrated. Talk about God's covering grace. If we're going to be kept, we're going to have to be kept by God. If we're going to be in our stable minds, it's going to take God to keep our minds. That's right. yeah. Let me just tell you, Sister Powell, you may be smart, but you can't keep your mind. That's right. you, you, you may be intelligent. You may have degrees. You may have pig skins on the wall, lamb skins hanging in your bedroom, but you can't keep yourself. Right. If you were to testify this morning, you would tell somebody, Sister Paul, that he woke me up this morning. Yeah. He started me on my way. And he blessed me to put one foot in front of the other. Yeah, I, t I tell people on a regular basis now, I have to unwind myself before I get out of the bed. I mean, I have to undo myself. I, I wake up sometime, Brother Miles, and, and my right is over here and my left is over there. My head is this way and my shoulders are that way. One leg here and one leg there. I have to unwind myself in the morning simply because I can't keep myself. And I have the audacity to brag about who I am. It is the pride of life that's tearing us asunder. The text declares that they took the fruit and they ate it. Not only did she eat it, she gave it to her husband. The jury is still out. Some people say that Adam stood there and let the lady talk to the to the to the serpent and let him let her have her own way, just like some men are today. Baby, do your thing. You do you, and I'm gonna do me. In the same house, uh, other theologians decide that that Adam was there, but he didn't speak up. Regardless of the situation, they had situations that were bad because they were disobedient to God. Whenever we fall into sin, sin equals to disobedience unto God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sin will cost us our very own lives. Sin. If they took of the fruit. They ate it. And death showed up. Death was twofold. Number one, death was spiritual death. And number two, death was physical death. Yeah, yeah. So they had broken away from God. They needed God. They needed God to be with them as he had been with them before. But they found themselves dying. They had never died before. Man was not made to die. But now because of sin, man is dying from now on. Let me tell you, when you woke up this morning, it didn't matter where your mascara was or, or whether it was on right or not, you are dying. You're going to leave here. You're going to leave here one way or the other. Stop making this your place. Stop making this your home. This is not your home. We are just pilgrims passing through. We got to leave here. That's why it just blows my mind when some people love one pass away, they just squall and fall out because their love. Don't you know we're dying every day? Yeah, yeah, 
And nowadays, parents are not just dying before children. Children are dying before parents. There are short graves like there are long graves. Let me just share with you, we got to leave here one day. And it's because Adam and Eve messed up in the garden. Verse number seven says their eyes of both of them were open. And they knew that they were naked. Let me just say what you say to you, Brother Nan Law. Some things are not for us to know. Some things we won't learn until we get to heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some things God has allowed us to peek over into and we see some things. But because he is an almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful God, he knows us before we do what we said we were not going to do. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Matter of fact, his ways and his thoughts are as far away from our thoughts. When we think we got it going on, his thoughts and our thoughts are so far away. It's as far as the east is for west, from the west, and they never touch each other. Yes, He's God. He's an omniscient God. He, he knows all. He sees all. He, he's, he acts upon all. He, he knows it before you know what you're going to do. Last time you cussed your child out, he knew you were going to do it before you did it. That's right. Last time you thought bad of the pastor, he knew it before you thought it. The last time you said, that old bald head joker, tell me to do one more thing. I know what I'm going to tell him where to go. How many of y'all said that? Go ahead and raise your hand right now in the room. On, on, on the screen, just raise your hand. If he asks me one more thing to do, I'm going to let him have it, and it ain't going to be in the morning. It's going to be right now. Boy, I mean, the hands just start popping up on the screen. I mean, people just... God knew it before you thought it. Because he's omniscient. He's the almighty God. He, he knows everything and he sees everything. The Bible says that they found out they were naked and they sewed fig leaves to cover themselves. They sewed, sewed, sewed together fig leaves to cover themselves. You see, today we have fig leaves, but we don't sew fig leaves together as they did. And the reason why they sewed fig leaves together, because in ancient times, the fig leaves were the biggest leaves available to them. And so they took the biggest leaves and they sewed them together. So now what we do, we try to cover our face in our shame. And then we don't know, not only does God know everything, he sees everything. So what we do, we get smooth and cool, and we cover ourselves. And we've come to the conclusion that since we've covered ourselves, no one can see us. We've come to the conclusion that since I've covered myself, God doesn't see my sin. We cover ourselves. We, we cover ourselves. We don't have the leaves, but we cover ourselves to act like God can't see our eyes so he can't see our guilt. We cover ourselves. We act like since God can't see our face, we cover our guilt. Brother Irvin, we are covering ourselves and we are fooling ourselves like God can't see who we are. Oh, you're right. And we look like we look like this to other people, because other people not only do they know we are sinners, they are sinners too. Yeah. All right. yeah. And we think since we cover our faces, Sister Davis, we think, we think that God doesn't see. But I'm talking about the God who knows everything, the God who sees everything, and we think we cover ourselves like this. But really, 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 we just got a veil over our face and God sees us yeah, yeah, yeah. like this. All right. God sees right through your mascara, sees right through your suits, sees right through your shoes, sees right through your hair bows, he sees right through your bows, he sees right through your dress. God sees everything because he is God. So, Sister I tell you, you might as well take it off <laughs> because God sees everything. The masks are good for blocking out spillings. The masks are good for blocking out those contaminants. The masks are good for us 
supporting ourselves during this pandemic. But the problem is, it's no good when it comes to covering up sin when it comes to God. All right. You got to deal with it. You, you got you to gotta talk to God about it. You have to tell God about it. Sister Richard, you just can't cover it up from God. God sees it. God hears it. God knows it. But he's a merciful God. I said he's a merciful God. He is a merciful God. How do you know he's a merciful God? Because when he came walking in the cool of the day, he said, Adam, Adam, where are thou? Adam, where are you? In the hood, we'll say it like this, where you at? Adam, show up. What, where you at, man? What, what's going on with you? And Adam says, we are naked. God asked the question, how you know you're naked? He said, because we ate of the forbidden fruit. God cursed them, cursed the snake. He crawled on the ground from now on. Cursed the man. He, he will work by the sweat of their brow. Let me tell you, man, you ought to be working. God says you ought to work. I look at TV all the time, and I look at the, the, the first 48. It means that you got to catch the criminal in the first 48 hours. They think they can get away without working, Brother Carter. They think that they can, they so smart that they can get by without working. They think they can rob, steal, and kill and don't have to work. But God says you're going to work, and when you work, you're going to work hard. He said, because you messed up, you're going to work hard. You, you, gonna, you messed up, now you're going to work hard the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. Have, have, you, have you ever seen young folk that don't want to work? Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they lay up on others and they use other folk stuff and they, they spend other folk money and they really just rather not work. They don't, want no, they don't want any part of work. The Bible says that the man ought to work. Paul puts it like this. If he doesn't work, he ought to starve to death. Well, you see that in the scripture because it says if he doesn't work, he ought not eat. Yeah, yeah. So he ought to starve to death. If he doesn't work, he ought not eat. And then it said to the woman, when you have a child, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have pain. Yeah, yeah. You can do the epidural or whatever you want to do. <laughs> it's going to be some pain. Yeah, yeah. When you give childbirth, it's going to hurt. When you give childbirth, Sister David, it's going to be pain. When you give childbirth, some things are going to happen that's going to cause you pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he cursed them, but he still has grace on them. He puts them, he kicks them out of the garden. He put flaming sherbins there to, to, to turn fire around where they can't enter back into the garden. He evicted them. Sin will get us evicted. Sin will always take us farther than we want to go. Sin will make us stay longer than we want to stay. And sin will always cost us more than we can afford to pay. It's called sin. Sin, the only way to get sin is to poke your eye out. Get rid of sin is to poke your eye out. S-I-N, the only way to get rid of sin is to poke the eye out. And the I represents the pride of life. Every time you say something, I did this. And it's because of sin. Couples who don't get along, it's because of, of I. I want it my way. Couples who can't make it, it's because of I. If I can't have it my way, I'm going to take my ball and go home. Athletes that can't make it on the court together, it's because of I. People who can't make it on job, it's because of I. But God has covering grace. God has covering grace. His grace is when he gives us love when we don't deserve it. His grace is when he blesses us when we don't deserve to be blessed. Have God been blessing you like that? I just want to serve notice on you this morning. You don't deserve to be here. I, I just testify for myself. I know I don't deserve to be here because I've been gone a long time ago if it had not been for God's mercy and God's grace. 
I, I messed up. I messed up too. And y some of y'all said God gave you a second chance. Let me tell you, God gave me another chance. I burnt my second chance out before I was two. God gave me another chance. And he keeps giving me another chance. And he keeps giving me another chance because of his grace. Verse number 21 says, and Adam called his wife's name Eve, verse 20, because she was the mother of all living. Verse 21 says, also for Adam and his wife, the Lord made him tunics of skin and covered them. Even though we are wrong, yeah, yeah. even though we mess up, yeah. even though we fall short, God is still merciful and keeps covering us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, they deserve to be evicted. They deserve to be turned away from God. From now on, they did not deserve to be in God's presence, but God was merciful unto them, Brother Miles. Yeah. He gave them mercy. Even though they didn't deserve mercy, he kept giving them mercy. No, you're right. He gave them another chance. So he take tunics and cover them. In the ancient days, this, these tunics would come around right below their, their right below their knees, and they were fine linen. It, it was fine fabric. And women who are who are seamstress and men who are tailors will, will look forward today to have tunic clothing. Because it's fine, Sister Brown. It's nice, great quality. It's a tunic. And and, and God covered them with skin skin of tunic what that says to me that an animal had to die let me tell you for God's sin for God wiping for, in order for God to wipe away sin something has to die yeah, yeah, yeah. so the tunic has to die animals had to die they couldn't separate themselves from sin by growing a new crop animals had to die there was one for each one of them. One for Adam and one for Eve. Had to die. When they were in the wilderness, when they were in the wilderness, one animal had to die for the whole nation. When they were about to leave out of Egypt, one animal had to die for every household. But I stopped by to let you know today that over 2,000 years ago, <laughs> Jesus himself, the son of God, died for the whole world. Jesus gave his life for us. He died for the whole world. He, he died over 2,000 years ago because of our sin. What can wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Over 2,000 years ago, he died on a skull hill called Calvary. Mean men killed him. They stretched him wide. They raised him high. They dropped him low. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. Yes, he, did. he died, I tell you. Yes, he, did. he died until the earth reeled and rocked like a drunken man. He died until one centurion soldier tried out, surely this must be the son of God. Yes, he died until the S. You in refused to shine. He died to the moon dripped down in blood. He died over 2,000 years ago on a skull hill called Calvary for your sins and my sins. They took him off the cross. After he died, they pierced him in his side. Out came blood and water. They took him off the cross, laid him in a barber tomb. It was Joseph's brand new tomb. But early that third day morning, Early that third day morning. Amen. Right early that third day morning. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He covers us. He covers us. He keeps on covering us. Though our sins be as scarlet, he covers us. Though we continue in sin, he covers us. Though we do it over and over again, he covers us. Though we keep messing up, Jesus covers us. It's God's grace. It's God's mercy that keeps right on covering us. And while he's giving us grace, while he's giving us mercy, we need to come on in the house. Come on to the Lord. 
Come on, give your life to him while he's covering us. While the blood is yet running warm in your veins. Come on back to the Lord. Repent of your sins and walk away from your sins. Come on back to the Lord. He's covering us through his grace. He's covering us through his mercy. There may be somebody here today who, never, who have not tried this Jesus we're talking about. You've not trusted him as your savior. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. You need to come to him. If you've not tried him, just repeat this simple prayer after me and come to him. And let him know you believe the story that Jesus died over 2,000 years ago. That Jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb. And that Jesus rose from the dead. You ought to come to Jesus today. If you believe this story, would you just repeat after me? I had to come to him. No, no, no. Don't, don't wait till you get it right. Don't wait till you stop sinning. I had to come to him messed up. I came to him torn up. I came to him really jacked up. And I found in him a resting place. And he has made, he has made me glad. Will you just repeat after me in this simple prayer? and invite Jesus into your life. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. into my life and make me a new creature. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you. There may be others of you. Who are saved and know that you are. But for some reason or the other, you have done what Adam and Eve have done, walked away from God. I want to pray with you and I want you to give your life back to God. If you're saved, you're always saved, you will always be saved, but you have a disconnect in your fellowship. You have a right relationship, but your fellowship has faltered. Let me pray with you. Lord Jesus, we ask you to bless those who have fallen short, those who have not done the things that are pleasing in you. We pray, Father God, that you lead them back. Lord, your word says you're in love with the backslider. We ask you to bless the backslider to come back. And Lord, we ask you to keep them in your safe care with love, grace, and compassion. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who are in between church homes or don't have a church home. Whether you're on the broadcast or in the building, this is your moment. This is your invitation. I recommend the New Beginning Church where, where you can be a member of the New Beginning Church, whether you're local or global. You can be a part of our church. If, you, if you're in the building, we invite you to come. If you're on the broadcast, we invite you to inbox me and let me know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. We'll be glad to have you and fellowship with you and be a part of this great church in Southeast Houston. The door is open. We offer Christ to you. Oh, my sister. We offer Christ to you, oh, my brother. We offer Christ to you, my beloved one. Oh, my sister. If you receive Christ during this broadcast or during this service, 
please inbox me and let me know. And I want to rejoice with you if you have turned your life back to Christ through recommitment, rededication. Inbox me and let me know. I want to celebrate with you. And if you have joined the New Beginning Church, I look forward to joining the New Beginning Church. I look forward to welcome you to the family of faith. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. It is God's covering grace that we're now enjoying. The saints back home would say, it's the Lord's blessings that we're now, that we're now enjoying. Hallelujah to the Lord. It is now time for offering. It is time. It is offering time. It is time to give unto the Lord. It is time to give unto the Lord. If you're in the building today, we're not passing out the envelope, but your envelope is at the front door. You can get it as you come in. The envelope is here at the front door. You can get your envelope. When you fill your envelope out, make sure you put your name, address, phone number on there. Make it clear. Put your zip code on there. Make it clear. And if you if you do seal your envelope, don't just tuck it in. Don't lick it. Don't let, don't lick it. We don't want you to lick the envelope. Don't wet it. Just tuck it in, and it'll be safe, uh, just like that. Amen. And if you're listening to us by way of broadcast, you can you can also give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Whether you're in the building or on the broadcast, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The third way that you can give is by P.O. Box. You can mail your offering to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box. 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459. That's P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459. For those of us in the room, I want to ask you to stand on this side, stand on this side, and from the rear to the front, come and bring forth your tithes and your offering. Those on this side, please stand. Those on this side. I will bless the Lord. Oh, master. In all that is Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Holy, holy, holy name. I will bless the Lord. When I go to be on this side to stand. From the rim to the front, bring forth the Lord's tithes, offer that sacrificial gift. Oh, my soul, and everything, everything, everything. Bless him, bless him. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Bless his holy, holy, holy name. Bless his holy name. He has done great things. He has, he has done great things. He's done great, great things. Yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord. He has done great things. He's done great things. Bless him, bless him. Bless him. Eternal God, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for every giver. We ask you to bless every giver in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. I will bless the Lord. During our prayer time, we are praying for C.W. Cameron. We are praying for the health of C.W. Cameron, Sister Paul's brother. We are praying for, for his health. We are praying for all the students that are are going back to face-to-face -face learning. We're praying that God continue to bless you and keep you. We're praying for Gilbert Garza, who will be going back face-to-face, -face, and many others who are going back face-to-face. -face. And not only that, we're praying for those who are still on the internet. The internet has caused problems and troubles for teachers and students alike. 
So we're lifting them, lifting them in prayer. Why don't we go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless you. We praise you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we pray for C.W. Cameron. We pray that you heal and touch. We pray that you amaze the doctors. We pray for a miracle as only you can do, Father. We ask you to heal and touch his body in the name of Jesus. We pray for Garrett Garza and all other students who are going back face-to-face -face learning, going back to school. We pray that you protect them, lead them, guide them, and direct them. And we're praying for students who are struggling during this time, during this pandemic, through uh, distant learning. We ask you to bless them, Father God, and anoint them and give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word and of the lesson. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. It is time now that we move our hearts toward communion. Communion is for those who have received Christ as their personal Savior and those who have been, tied, been baptized on that belief. Um, it's time for us to turn our hearts toward, toward communion, toward communion. Uh, Brother Miles, if you would uh, release the lid here, and uh, we want to make sure that we all eat together. If you're at home, uh, go ahead and get your crackers and your juice, and, uh, and prepare your heart for communion. Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room, and he says, for as often as you do this, you show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. We want to make sure that we examine ourselves. Paul said to the church at Corinth, examine yourselves. Make sure that there is no sin about you. Make sure that you don't drink damnation to your soul. Examine yourself. And if you have aught against any brother, forgive them for it. Any sister, forgive them for it. It is not worth even dealing with. For the Bible is saying that we ought not drink damnation to our soul. Father God, we thank you for the table. We thank you for Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and his confession on our behalf. God, we thank you, Lord, for blessing our lives and, and healing our spiritual bodies. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the body of Jesus Christ. We bless you now. Now we ask you as we drink and we eat that we will not drink or eat damnation into our souls. That we will forget about and forgive those who, who we have issues with. We pray, Father God, that you bless us that we will drink with purity of heart, soul, and mind. That we will honor Jesus and what he did over 2,000 years ago on the Star Hill called Calvary. Lord, we ask you to bless us now. And we honor you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Brother Miles, if you would move that basket over to the side. We want to uh, drink and eat together. Those of you at home, if you would just hold your communion and we will eat and drink together. I want to ask this side to stand and come and, and get your communion. Take it back to your seat with you. And we will eat and drink together.
disciples, he said to them, this is my body that I share for you. Eat ye all of it. And he held up the cup and said, this is the cup of my blood of the redemption for the redemption of sin. Drink ye all of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Jesus did it for us. Amen. 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 If you would, hold your container. Brother Miles will come out and uh, and take that for you. He just happened to be the closest one today. I guess people on, online saying he's working the heck out of him today. Amen. He just happened to be the closest one. And so we want him to to earn his keep today. Amen. 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 Let me see it up here, Brother Miles. Let me see that up here. Thank you, sir. Yes. Yes. Remember, sin has a way of always invading the camp. We don't have to call the name of sin, do we? All wrongdoing, all failure to do that which is right, is not of God. So remember that God's grace is sufficient. God has covering grace. His grace is sufficient for us. His grace is covering did it through Jesus Christ. He did it for us even before we got here. Paul says in Romans 5 and 8, while we were yet in the thick of sin, Christ died for us. He gave his life for all, for all of us. Hallelujah. He is, he is our comfort. And the Bible says when they had taken the communion, when they had taken, some would say, the supper, they sung a song and they went out. There was no benediction that day. They sung a song and they went out. Will you stand please?